So this week is another first for me. I'm going to be painting this skull. This is a commissioned piece, and here's how I approach doing this. This is an image I found online, and I took into Photoshop and colorized it, but the original image is a 3D uh, model created by an artist named Adam Scutt. Um, I used Sorol tracing paper just to transfer the basic shapes uh, of the skull. Again, I'm not trying to make a complete perfect copy. I'm just trying to get the, the general proportions right. So this is a white acrylic gesso on a wooden panel, and I'm just adding a thin layer of acrylic paint to tone the board and seal in the lines from the transfer. That way while I'm working on this it won't smear those lines. I then went in with a, a mixture of black and red to try to establish an, a vignette effect uh, around the piece before I started to work on the skull. I added in a little more cadmium red and, and just kept working in toward the center of the piece. just again working on the background. I forgot to actually paint the sides of the panel. That's something I usually do first when I've done these panels um, in the past, but it wasn't too late to go ahead and do that and get it out of the way. So the first thing I decided to do with this was to go in and try and paint the darkest places I could find, so the d darkest, deepest shadows within the skull. And it's just a simple place to start, something that I felt comfortable, okay, that I can I can focus on that and uh, it'll give me something to work from from a value perspective. You know, I think it worked out pretty well. Yeah, I, from there I proceeded to go with a mid-tone or a little bit of a lighter shadow tone and just expand those areas. So pretty early on I started using a palette knife to sort of scratch into, to scratch into the paint and create a little bit of texture. I think originally I wanted to do this a lot more than I ended up doing uh, throughout the piece, but the piece started looking pretty good as I was painting it, so I just decided to not push it too much further with the texture idea. So the only real requirement of this piece was that it be done in red, and I got to the point here with the shadows where I felt like it was time to add a lot more red color. Once I got a layer of the red laid down, I, I came in with the a lighter, almost a pink, to start working on some of the highlights. And once I started putting down uh, this this highlight, now that I've gotten some really dark tones, some medium tones, and now some light tones, I can start to see the value range, and I can determine whether or not you know the darks need to get darker and the lights need to get lighter. And so I started here with the lights now going even lighter and going sort of working backwards to work this towards the darks. So I sped this up quite a lot, obviously, but uh, I think that the main point here is that once you get the dark tone, the medium tone, the light tones down, uh, the details really start to make the difference, and you can see how this whole thing from this point on really starts to come together. So although I was, it was pretty much up to me to paint whatever I wanted with this one, I did want to add something to make this a little more personal for the client. So one of the things that I know the person this is for likes frogs and so I decided to add a little poison frog in the corner and what's really kind of cool about this to me from a conceptual perspective is that I, I chose like a little poison frog and I thought that it was kind of neat that the thing that might be scary about this picture, the skull, is actually completely harmless but yet the thing that might be cute and cool to look at and you think about you know as being not that scary is potentially deadly. I had to say I did consider putting the frog either crawling out of the eye socket or maybe on top of the skull and I just didn't have the heart to do it so I ended up sticking it down in the corner and I think it worked out pretty good. Yeah so like I said before I started with the darks and then went medium and to light highlights colors and now I've worked my way back from lights all the way back to darks again. So I'm just trying to bring out as much of the shadows as I can you know dark in the background here I'm just adding some last minute details just a little bit of touch up adding a little more black to the background and just going over all the little highlights and just making them a little more crisp adding just little tiny details that you probably can't really see very well in this video but do make a lot of difference and really make this thing pop After that, the only thing left to do is to sign it, and then I'm going to finish it off with golden isolation coat to seal it all in, and then a layer of satin varnish 
uh, over the top. I let the isolation coat dry for 24 hours before I put on the acrylic varnish and uh, it seems to, to work nicely. I was really, really happy with the way it ended up. The client ended up being super happy with it. And that's always a nice thing. So yeah, tell me, tell me what you think. Uh, I know it's kind of a different uh, subject matter for me, but I like where it ended up. So let me know uh, what you think about it. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Later.